am so cold. Yeah, well, you should have brought yourself some clothes. Hey, don't worry. I bought a knife. A survival knife. I'm going to start a fire. Okay. How, how are we going to do that? I don't have any clue. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today I want to talk about a topic that comes up a lot on my channel, and that's about the importance of actually using the skills that you're planning to use Post SHTF now, practice them, get good at them. I think there's a tendency with a lot of people to just buy gear and feel like that's an insurance policy. You, know, you buy a water filter and you figure, well, I'm good for water for the rest of my life. I'll always be able to cl uh, drink clean water because I own a water filter now. Uh, people, buy, people buy a lot of survival knives and, and they're like, I'm good for a knife fight. And there's a bunch else <laughs> you can do with the knife too. But most of it's skill. Most of it's skill work. Uh, you can buy the tools, but then you also need to have the skills that go with them. And today I want to talk about lock picking. This is a lock picking set. I've owned this for about a year or so, and I've been practicing on and off over time, and I'm all right-ish. You know, I give myself maybe a, a D plus or a C minus <laughs> on my skill level. I don't even know what the hell most of these things are. I, I kind of use this one. It's got a little zigzag on the end. I use this one. It's just got like a simple bump. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the rest of these are all about. This one here looks like a snowman. Look at that. Can you see that? Get over the whites. You can see it's like that, like for picking the locks at Santa Claus's house or something. I don't know what that's all about. You can tell me in the comments below. Uh, but again, like what I always advocate on my channel is you don't want to be perfect at things. You know, just start getting your feet wet. Try things out. Um, and, that's, and that's really important because if you don't try things out, you don't really know what it's like in the real world. So... A lot of these lockpick sets come with uh, a lock to pick, and it's clear. You can see all the little uh, the pins on the inside, and the idea is when you're putting your lockpick in, you want to get the shear line of all the pins to, to match, and then you can rotate the barrel. You rotate the barrel using a, uh, a little wrench. This is one I made myself. Um, but I wanted to show you, if you get a lockpick set, what it's like to pick the lock that comes with it. Now I'm putting a little tension on there. I'm going to put this guy in here, and now it's really easy on these because it's clear. You can see right through it, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to close my eyes. So we'll simulate like it's a real lock, you know? The zombies are coming. i got to get into the zombie shelter or whatever. So i got the pick in there. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm really closing my eyes. I'm not cheating. To show you kind of my skill level with this lock. And I'm just raking the, the pick along the pins. Finding that shear line, pop, there we go. We're saved! I did it really quickly, so we're safe from the zombies. Uh, except for like the one slow person to like show that the danger was there. They, they got eaten, that was too bad for them. But I saved everyone else, I picked the lock. So you might see that and be like, wow, he's all right. Why did he say he would only give himself a D plus or maybe a C minus for his lock picking skills? Well, like I said, I wasn't looking at what I was doing through here. I was acting as though it was a lock that I was blind to and I couldn't see the inside. But I have a suspicion, uh, based on a couple of these uh, locks that come with the lock picking sets, that these are much easier to pick than a real lock. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I mean here. So this is just the lock to my house, and I have tried this lock. I've tried picking this lock a couple dozen times or so. I've done it once. I've been successful once. And I've, been, I've sat down here for a while, trying it. So, putting the tension on with the wrench, put the lock pick in. Now I'm going to watch what I'm doing now, because I can't see shit anyway, can I? And I'm just doing the same deal as I did before, taking the, the pick and kind of raking it over the pins in there. And the way that lock picking works is that there are tiny little manufacturing differences between the pins. Some of the pins are a little bigger than others. Some of the channels are a little bigger than the others. It's all in the tolerances of the different locks. And lock picking exploits that by pushing up the pins that are the most loose first, and then the wrench turns the lock a little bit, and then the remaining most loose pin 
gets pushed up and then, you know, I, I forget how many pins there are in there, but just kind of keep raking the thing over the pins, slowly bumping them up until they pop. And I'm going to fast forward to the end of this scenario for you. I'm probably not going to get this door open. Because this is not this. This is a simulation of a real world sort of situation. And this, that's the real thing. This isn't even like, this isn't some crazy superior lock. I mean, it's a decent lock, obviously. You, you really have to get out there and try stuff out in the real world to see, you know, get your feet wet and see what happens. Uh, if I had just done this, this little lock here, I would think that I was good. I'm like, I got my lock pick set. Man, am I good at it? Now I'm good for that zombie apocalypse. But, you know, try it on something real and, and not so much. And I think that goes for lots of different gear. That goes for water filters and knives and, and everything. There's, a, there's, there's the object and then there's the skills that go with it. Uh, so try, try out your gear and, uh, and, and see how good you really are with it and see how, really, how good the gear really is at the same time. Um, now, I bought, I bought this lockpick set and this is a good uh, set, I think. It, it feels nice in your hand, they feel pretty sturdy, uh, and uh, you know, I, I feel like I got a good, uh, a good lockpick set there. It's made by Mazu, M-A-Z-U. Uh, so I, I, would, I would recommend this, it wasn't very expensive either. Um, but you don't, you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to buy a lockpick set. In fact, if the zombie apocalypse happens today, and it hasn't come through in the mail yet for you, you can make one for sure. Here's a paper clip that I bent out into a kind of a wiggly wire here. I'm going to make the, the pick first. What you want to do is just bite a little bit at the end, and I'm using a pair of vice grips, but you could use pliers, and we're going to make just a, a little bump on the end of this thing here. And I'll show you closer once I get it. What we're trying to do is just make Come on, yo. There you go. Just make a little bump. And I got a black coat so you can see it in front of my black coat. So you can see there's just a little bit of bump on the end. And that's what you use to rake along the underside of the pins to push the pins up. So you want to make one thing like that, and then you need to make your wrench. I don't make a wrench just out of this because I don't, I don't need both. Ooh, there's a spider crawling underneath me. Move away. Ah, just balled up. Okay, well stay there then. Don't crawl on me. There's no dangerous spiders around here. Well, except for black widows, but you know, don't see those too much. One beneath me is not a black widow. So I'm going to take this wire and bend it down and kind of squish it. So you got something like this. So the wire goes up and then comes right back down and you get this sort of flat section where it turns around. And then you want to use your pliers or your vice grips or whatever and bite maybe about, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch. It's like an eighth of an inch plus another half of an eighth of an inch. Just bite them down right there. And what I oftentimes like doing, I'll take these ends and kind of spin them together like that. It makes the handle a little easier to hold on to. And then give it a 90 degree bend and pop it out and you're done. And there's your, your wrench. I like that. I'm going to get that in front of my dark coat too so you can see. Just a little, little bend there. And that is what goes up here and can give you the tension to do your lock picking and find out how bad you are or good you are at doing the whole thing. One thing that's kind of nice too is uh, if you use vice grips, you can kind of like rough up the surface here by kind of biting into it, and that I think helps grab it in there. But the point is, you don't have to pay a lot for your gear. You can make it, uh, and the important part is the skill set. Can you do you have the skills to actually do this stuff? So get out there, really practice stuff. Let me know. Do you have gear that you haven't had a chance to try out yet? What's been keeping you from doing that? I know I have gear that I haven't really run through the ringer yet. Uh, just because, you know, life gets in the way and you haven't really had a chance to get out there yet. I have my uh, escape hot air balloon that, you know, just weather conditions haven't been good to try that with. I'm just kidding. I don't have an escape hot air balloon. But uh, what do you have? What do you have that you haven't gotten your hands dirty with yet? What's holding you up? Get out there. Do it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.